Welcome back, scholars. We are discussing the author John Updike. He is a writer who discussed the the middle class America and the state of Americans as they were in the, in the time that he was writing. Um, this is a different kind of story. It's he wrote stories about ordinary people, and that makes them somewhat spectacular because, believe it or not, ordinary people do live extraordinary lives. This story, <clears throat> along with A and P are a couple of samples of his work. This one is a little uh, different from A&P in that it deals with adults and the phenomenon of the breakup of a marriage, as you would gather by the title. <coughs> um, as I drop my notes into my lap, bear with. Okay, the story takes us inside the collapse of a family, as demonstrated by the title. The first image we get is the renovations of the home. Okay. Uh, he alludes to this, too, in, in the story itself, talking about how so many marriages that the couple knew of, uh, the end of the marriage was preceded by a renovation. In this case, it's the tennis court. Um, could be some symbolic. Well, the, the crumbling tennis court itself is symbolic, and it symbolizes the marriage itself. It's uh, falling apart. Um, John is working on... Is, Fiercely working on the house. He's in fact he's he's working on the lock on the screen porch uh, when they when the story opens, um, and this is uh, we can derive a lot from this. He's you know he's he's on his way out, but there's some part of him that is that draws him back. He's wanting to make everything as secure and as as ready as possible, keep it protected, you know, protect the family that he is leaving. Uh, the family, or rather the parents, have decided to hold off on telling the kids until all are assembled. This is Joan's idea. Uh, rather, this is um, uh, Richard's idea. Uh, he wanted to do it. Uh, Joan wanted to do it well, one by one, get them all alone, um, so as to create, according to Richard, four hurdles for him, as opposed to just one. Joan, the wife, is rather bitter about the proceeding, reveals to us that her husband's it's her husband Richard's idea to to separate. We'll figure out why a little bit later on in the story. Richard seems almost reluctant to leave though. You notice how he's performing all these maintenance tasks. He's he's uh, despite his desire for freedom, he's also sorrowful. Okay. Um despite his best efforts, he and Joan's plan for he is and he and Joan's plan, Richard begins to kind of lose control at dinner. He starts crying. Uh, it all starts to unravel there. Joan extends a measure of grace to Richard in forgiving him for his tears. And oddly, it's really the children who are most engaged in the handling of the separation. Each one of them takes it in a different way. Um, one tries to be funny. Uh, one is just is, is upset. Richard and Joan somehow feel sep feel justified in separating because their children are older. It doesn't make it any easier, though. Richard and John, um, Richard and John, his son, that is, react like men. They tend to distance themselves with work and concern about the tennis court. You know, they talk about men tend to do that. We tend to compartmentalize. We tend to, um, you know, throw something else up in there. In, in, in the way of uh, emotions, anything to keep from expressing true sorrow. And so they talk about the tennis court, right? Yeah, well, the tennis court's coming along. Right? Yeah. Um, in the aftermath, Joan, after they've told all the children except for Dickie, who was at a rock concert, uh, she chastises Richard for making her look like the bad guy. Ultimately, we find out when... when um, Richard goes to pick up Dickie. They're passing the house of uh, uh, the woman he's having an affair with, which is ironically across the street from the church on the road. And it's just a side note there. We just barely mentioned, but Updike does this rather geniusly. He puts it in there and tells us, and it holds off the detail until uh, the point of greatest impact. Oh, that's why they're separating. Right. So he's John uh, Richard is left to tell Dickie who's been in a concert that night on the trip. We learned that Richard's having an affair, barely mentioned. Um, uh, he dedicates actually most of the text for to John's love for his children. Okay, 
Ultimately, it's Dickie, though, who brings it home to him, Richard, uh, to bring home to Richard the mistake he's making. He asks him, but why, Dad? Why are you doing this? And this one brief question, which Richard ultimately cannot answer because, well, uh, Updike tells us he couldn't remember why. Uh, it comes to realize just how foolish he's been and how much he's standing to lose here, how much that he's... Um, He's losing his family, and uh, and for what? Ultimately, I think, what do you think? It seems like that maybe he's reluctant here. He doesn't really want to end his marriage. He just got caught up in something. Or perhaps maybe in the emotion he really did forget. Anyway, this is a, a very real story. I'm talking, talking about very real events and the kind of um, collapse of the American family that unfortunately has become fairly common these days. And so that is John Updike. Um, it's a very brief story, but it has the impact of a, of a punch to the gut. All right, so that's John Updike. Do what you will with the story, and I'll see you in the next video.